Hey, good morning, Imagine Kids. Thank you so much for being here for our online kids service. We are going to start right away with our preschool lesson for the morning. This month, we are continuing our Make Waves series. And this month, we are going to learn that we can make waves with the help of Jesus and that we will learn about kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Today, we are going to focus on that Jesus can help me choose kindness. Let's say our memory verse together. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6. Say it with me. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6. Stand up and dance with me as we worship Jesus together. Jesus is helping me. I can do the things that He does. I can love like Jesus. I believe His light can shine through me. I can do the things that He does. I can love like Jesus. I wanna be. There 
There are so many ways we can use our hands to be kind. We could use our hands to clap for our friends. We can use our hands to hug. Oh, and we can use our hands to help. I wonder where we should hang our banner. Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Zoe. Who? Who? Making a fun banner, are you? Hi, Ollie. Yes, we're making a banner with our hands. Then we'll remember to use our hands to be kind. Kindness is so important. It's true. We can choose to be kind to everyone, too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? Oz got a Bible story for me and you. Oh, well, that is so kind. Oh, hi, friends. I'm Justin the Mailman, and I'm delivering today's mail. And look, this is a get well card. This is so kind. Kindness is what today's story is about. Let me just put the story mail in the mailbox. Our true story from the Bible is about a man walking on a road on his way to the city of Jericho. He was just walking down the road until all of a sudden, two men hurt the man and took his money. He had so many boo-boos. He needed help. Oh, look, here comes someone. Let's ask him to help. Everyone on the count of three yell, please help. One, two, three, please help. But he didn't stop to help. He just walked on by the hurt man. That's not kind. Here comes another man. Let's ask him to help. Ready? One, two, three. Please help. But he didn't stop either. He just walked on by the hurt man. That's not kind. Then a third man came by. Uh-oh. He's a Samaritan. He's not going to help. The Samaritan people and the hurt man's people are not friends. There's no way the Samaritan will be kind and help the hurt man. But look, he's stopping. He's showing kindness and giving the hurt man bandages. Now the Samaritan is being kind and putting the hurt man on the donkey and taking him to a place to stay until he's all better. Wow. The Samaritan man was so kind. And do you know what? Jesus can help us choose to be kind too. When someone is hurt, we can choose to be kind and help them. When someone is sad, we can choose to be kind and give them a hug or cheer them up with kind words. Jesus will help us choose kindness. Jesus can help us do everything. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me. Who can help you do everything? Jesus can help me do everything. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can help you do everything? Jesus can help me do everything. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. I'll see you next time. So there's your story, and it's all true. The Samaritan chose to be kind to the hurt man. We can choose to be kind to everyone, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow! The Samaritan chose to be kind to the hurt man. Jesus can help me choose to be kind to everyone. Kindness can change the world. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Kind is 
cool. This looks so awesome. You know what? Instead of putting up our banner inside the clubhouse, I'm gonna put it up outside so everyone can see it. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, kindergarten through fifth grade. Now we're gonna jump into your lesson for the morning. Remember that making waves is what you do today it can change the world around you. And today we are focusing on kindness. We are going to learn that we can show kindness to everyone. We're going to hear a story from the Bible in the book of Luke. Let's say our memory verse together. God began a good work in you and I am sure that he will carry it on until it is completed. That will be the day Christ Jesus returns. Philippians 1, 6. Say it again with me. God began a good work in you, and I am sure that he will carry it on until it is completed. That will be on the day Jesus Christ returns. Philippians 1, 6. You're my calm in the chaos My peace in the war You speak light into darkness You tell me I'm yours Only you, Jesus, are in control You are my every heartbeat Every breath that I breathe You're all I need You're all I need You speak life
Hey everybody, my name is Haley. Question for you, what do you like to do when it's summertime? Do you go on vacation or play in the sprinklers or fire hydrants? Do you stay inside all summer playing video games? One of my favorite things to do is go to the beach. It's the perfect place to make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. You meet so many different kinds of people when you're at the beach. Surfers. Gnarly. Cowabunga. Treasure hunters. <laughs> Woo! Hey, hey! Yeah! <gasps> A bottle cap from 2017. Tourists. Ooh, oh, oh! At the beach, not only can you see literal waves being made, but you can make waves by showing things like goodness, gentleness, and especially kindness. In today's story, you'll hear one of Jesus' most famous parables about someone who showed kindness. And it wasn't someone you'd expect. So, you know, don't bail on me, jellies. Hang ten and we can make the drop on a twin fin. Seaweed slushies, am I right? Um, wipe out, point break, uh, you know? What, what, am I, what am I even saying? <laughs> Uh, later, <laughs> dudes, du dudettes. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. When Jesus traveled to a town, great crowds gathered to hear him teach, fishermen and merchants, beggars and rich men, little children and important scholars. Many people listened with open minds and hearts, but a few just wanted to prove that they already had the answers. One day, a law expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? What is written in the law? How do you understand it? The law expert smirked. He can relate the answers perfectly. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. The crowd was likely impressed. Clearly this man's a well-studied scholar. You have answered correctly. Do that, and you will live. The law expert couldn't quite leave it at that. He wanted to know just how little he can do and still look good. By neighbor, are we talking someone within 50 feet of my house? Across the street? Not down the block, surely. I mean, really, who is my neighbor? Jesus didn't give the law expert a dictionary definition of neighbor. In fact, he gave a more creative answer. Jesus told a story. If he told that same story today, it might sound something like this. One day, a man prepared to make a trip from Jerusalem down to Jericho. Hmm, no bus, no Uber. Looks like I'll be walking. The way was steep and rugged with many twists and huge rocks. That looks like a giant egg. And that one looks like a goat. That one looks like a an excellent hiding place for robbers. Ah! Stick him up. Get his cash. Don't forget the new shoes. The robbers stripped the man of everything. They even beat him up. They left him on the side of the road, nearly dead. Help, help please. The hot sun beat down on the injured man. He was too weak to even crawl. But after what seemed like hours, he finally heard footsteps. A preacher was traveling down a narrow road, practicing his next sermon. Now you may ask, why do we need to raise money for a brand new church building with an indoor swimming pool and covered parking for the pastoral Tesla? To do the Lord's work, of course. When the preacher saw the engine man ahead, he quickly shifted to the other side of the road. Water, please. Uh, not really my department. That's pastoral care. I'll send a memo. The preacher quickly went on his way, still polishing his sermon notes. As the sun got lower in the sky, the engine man started to lose hope. But once again, 
You heard footsteps. Help me. A church worship leader was hurrying along the road, singing along with the music in his earbuds. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. The worship leader glimpsed the wounded man ahead, but pretending he hadn't seen a thing, he trotted to the other side of the road and kept right on going. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. The wounded man was desperate. The sun began to set as another traveler came along. The man tried to lift his head. Perhaps he could see the approaching stranger. Oh no. The stranger was a man from the nearby region of Samaria, even though they shared the same ancestors. The Jews and the Samaritans hated and mistrusted each other for hundreds of years. But unlike the preacher and the worship leader, the Samaritan stopped when he saw the wounded man. Oh no. The Samaritan felt compassion for the injured man. He slid off his motorcycle and used his first aid kit to clean and bandage the man's wounds. Let's get you someplace safe. Carefully, the Samaritan laid the injured man across the back of his motorcycle. Easy now. You take, take it slow. By the last light of the setting sun, the Samaritan brought the wounded man to an inn and made sure he had a good bed to sleep in for the night. The Samaritan found the innkeeper. Please take care of this man until he's all better. Here, here's my debit card, and if you have any extra expenses, I'll pay you back when I return. Murmurs of surprise rippled through the crowd as Jesus finished his unusual story. Jesus looked directly at the law expert. Which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? The law expert's eyes dropped, mind racing, looking for a way out. But the answer was clear. The one who felt sorry for him. Go and do as he did. Through his story, Jesus was clear. Your neighbor is not only someone who lives near you or is like you. Your neighbor is anyone who needs your help and kindness. Showing kindness to someone can be easy, especially when that someone is a lot like you. But Jesus' parable reminds us that we should be kind to everyone, even people who are different. People who look different, act different, and think different than we do. Showing kindness means treating people the way you want to be treated. It can mean helping someone who seems lost. Okay, so you wanna take a right at the one and then a left on Dillon Beach Road. There are some great views of the sunset out there. You'll love it. Kindness can mean learning how to communicate in a new way. Okay, so hanging 10 is when I hang all 10 of my toes off of the surfboard. <laughs> that is so totally rad. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> When you're kind, it could mean you're giving up what you want to do to spend time with someone else. Wow, you are really good at this game. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to show kindness and a lot of people who need it. So the one thing to remember today is this, show kindness to everyone. You can make waves of kindness to the people around you, not just your friends and family, but everyone. And if you need help, ask God. When you put your trust in Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit to help you show kindness. And if you need some practice, you can always go to the beach, if you can find one. Okay, so I go west uh, a bunch of miles. No, no, east a bunch of miles. Wait, no, maybe, maybe I'm upside down. Thank you so very much for joining me for our online kids service. I'm so glad that we can learn through about Jesus through Bible stories together in this way. Remember, as always, there are parent resources on our website that you can check out and use throughout the week to continue learning. Hope to see you here again next week. My peace in the world 
You speak light into darkness You tell me I'm yours Only you, Jesus, are